Rap groups have been proven as means to an end countless times throughout hip-hop history. Shoreline Mafia is no exception to this pattern at all. We can only imagine the sort of influence involved when dealing with millions of dollars, clout, and greed. When I first started coming up with Shoreline and yeah. everything, so me and Phoenix, everything was split 50-50, so I own the trademark too. Oh. I bought it way before I became a rapper. He said he would make that chain disappear. It's here though, right? <laughs> Y'all a group, how would it be that like Man, one person uh, end up owning the name? Shit, you have to ask him, I, yeah. I don't know. Oh, jeezy. He's with my daughter. Kid, he used to sleep on my couch. Bro. I'll never do another show on my face home again. That's just done. Hey, yo, Phoenix! Let me know if you want to knock the love, fool. Get that nigga on cheesy! Oh, Members of Shoreline Mafia posted to their Instagram account, Expletive Fox, we sip in juice for life. Feds came and kicked the dough in. Hollywood Police Department, man, get off the motherfucking meat litter, nigga. Nigga banned permanently from Instagram, but I don't know what's going on. Sometimes, like, part of growing is growing apart. I thought the group would have never split. It's like some whole, like, different shit now. Nah. Ojeezy and Phoenix Flexen are two of the four members that make up the group, along with Rob Vicious and Master Kato. Their story is unfortunately a very common one in the music industry and business in general. From living life as skateboarding taggers to going multi-platinum and touring internationally, Shoreline Mafia has garnered a cult fan base that was forced to choose sides at one point. When you think you know someone and they prove you wrong, it takes a solid individual to look past that type of betrayal, or just a well-structured contract at least. Nonetheless, this is how money and clout can really change everything. In real millennial fashion, Ojeezy and Phoenix claim to have actually met each other on MySpace and recorded their first song Friday on GarageBand with a $100 microphone. Phoenix brought in his high school friend who made beats for him, Rob Vicious, and Ojeezy met Master Kato at a Rock the Bells show. Like a lot of kids, these guys had their share of issues at home, leading them to really turn to each other as their own version of a family, a bond that they thought would never change. This was a revolutionary time for the internet when rappers were finally discovering the power of SoundCloud. Names like Lil Uzi Vert, Playboy Cardi, Juice World, XXX Tentacion, Lil Peep, and so many others were growing on this cloud sharing platform along with our very own Shoreline Mafia. At this time, they dropped their music video for their single, In the Field, where you have Phoenix and Ojeezy rapping, but Kato and Rob can be seen, along with a hundred other teenage kids sipping lean and smoking blunts. They started dropping classics like Vice City, I Got Dro, Home Invasion, Like Me, and other hits that had their buzz blowing up like a Nas balloon. Shoreline Mafia will drop their certified platinum record, Musty, which put the group on the map in a major way. With this newfound notoriety and clout, things got a bit dicey at times with there being a fight breaking out while Ojeezy was performing Musty in what looks like some sort of backyard party. Nonetheless, the group's debauchery will be a huge part of their success when Shoreline Mafia gets covered by Fox 11 News Los Angeles. Locally based rap group Shoreline Mafia is known to take their love of lean to another level. Shoreline Mafia is on the news. After Fox 11 first aired this story promo, members of Shoreline Mafia posted to their Instagram account this response, expletive Fox. We sip in juice for life. This sort of publicity would skyrocket Shoreline from an underground level to receiving serious offers coming in hand over fist from record labels all over the country. Leveraging the free publicity, Shoreline went on to drop certified gold record bottle service on Elevator, which of course had the Fox segment as the intro. Capitalizing on the momentum of everything coming together, Shoreline Mafia blesses the streets with certified gold album Shoreline Do That Shit. Along with singles like certified platinum record None Major and certified gold record What's The Deal. These guys were going crazy at this point and had been getting hit up by all the publications to cover Shoreline. However, they felt the best platform to do their first formal interview would be at No Jumper, which has over 2 million views to this day. Well, me and this nigga basically started this shit, like, I don't know what, like four years ago, something like that. Okay. Like right, like at the end of high school type shit. Yeah. Your childhood friends? Yeah. Uh, like high school high friends, school, we yeah. met in high school? Early high school. Okay. So how'd you guys become friends in high school? Uh, you smoking weed, fingering uh, girls in the like bathroom or what? Tagging and shit. Tagging? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, because so, you guys are graph kids, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, He's a few years younger than me, so. I brought them all around, put them up on game, and we just became stupid tight. Mm -hmm. And how to uh, sell fake lean by mixing Caro and NyQuil. That's good. You guys ever get served some fake lean? Uh, nah. <laughs> Never buy a fake yeah. lean. Come on now. Yeah. You ever serve somebody some it. fake lean? Yeah. 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 Okay, finesse. Let's hear about yeah. it. Yeah. How you do this? How you pull it off? You yeah. screw a hole in the bottom? I seen somebody do that one time. You know what I'm saying? You got to jig them for them pipes because they ain't going to know who sealed them. You feel me? 
Okay. I hit him with the K roll and mix it with the Z quill. You feel me? Every <laughs> once in a while, if I feel good, you know what I'm saying? I might throw a little Xanax in that motherfucker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait, so how's this work? You, t- you take the fucking right, fake look. lean and throw a Xan in? Man, bro, there's so many ways to get money, man. Now, this is a pivotal moment in the story that defines the future of Shoreline Mafia. However, nobody in the group knew this, like Ojeezy. On December 28, 2017, Ojeezy had went and applied for the trademark and ownership of the Shoreline Mafia name. This is common, especially for rich people. They seem to make a game out of trademarking everything they possibly can think of, mostly to uh, collect residuals on future executed ideas and brands. I mean, we have no reason to believe at this time OGZ secretly applied for the trademark with his own best interests in mind instead of consulting with the rest of the group. I could be wrong, but continue watching and you be the judge. However, it was also around this time when Rob Vicious shares with an online blog, probably about a year before we got our deal, OGZ just randomly hit me up because he's seen what I was doing with my music shit. Since then, he was like, shit, and we're you a part of Shoreline Mafia. If you want to drop music, you drop it through Shoreline Mafia. You good? I'm just like, shit, cool, fuck it. This year was telling us to the label's intentions on how they plan to market the group moving forward. We are now almost 12 months after Musty dropped, and Shoreline Mafia takes things up a notch by deciding to sign a deal with Atlantic Records in January 2018. Besides growing up and always wanting to be a part of a major label, when it finally came to it, I knew Atlantic was the best move because of the facts behind it. It's simple. Look at their roster. Everybody is winning and they know how to market music in a way that I feel is better than any other label. OGZ tells Billboard. At this point, the wave that Shoreline Mafia had was completely undeniable to the world. On February 5th, 2018, OGZ, along with someone named Glenn Milas, filed for the LLC for Shoreline Mafia. I mean, we have no reason to believe that OGZ has now filed for an LLC for Shoreline Mafia without consulting at least Phoenix, right? Anyway, the OTX tour was about to start and it was already 90% sold out. With the label behind Shoreline, they wanted to reintroduce the group to the mainstream world by doing a reshoot of the Musty music video. Atlantic Records chose the music video director James LaRice to work on this Musty revamp. My family is Ojeezy from Shoreline Mafia. He's the the father of my grandson, basically. He's with my daughter. He used to sleep on my couch when he was a kid, you know, and... And be like, you He's know, probably like, man, fuck him. Why is he putting my business on blast yeah, right yeah, now, I know, man? <laughs> I know. Or he would say, you know, one day, like, you know, one day, you, you know, we joked about doing a video for him. I was like, yeah, you know, when you get a budget or whatever. <laughs> so they they hustled it. They got a great deal. Yeah. Um. And yeah, so I did. So I did. I did a video. It was it was a video for the song uh, Musty that they. It, I guess it was a, you know one of the bigger bigger mm-hmm. songs. Mm-hmm. And they had already done a video for it, but like in a true record label fashion they wanted to take what was already working and try to redo it adam 22 from no jumper vlogged the video shoot where they had a five gallon bottle of lean the new musty video seemed to be a success sitting at 40 million views today and the original sitting at about 73 million views after the video drops i did think it was kind of odd that the merch they chose to promote the video had ogz and only the names of the rest of the group even though there is a photoshopped copy including all four members Okay, okay. With Rob Vicious acting like this in interviews. Them franchise boys, they was just yeah. shit. Tupac, all right. Niggas be like trying to overhype him, but I know y'all heard, yep. Yeah. And I like, see, yeah, y'all niggas right. tripping. That shit was a hit. Nigga. <laughs> 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 Hashtag real niggas. <laughs> I might reconsider also, but I mean, at least put Phoenix up there too. It looks like after this, Atlantic started really switching up their marketing plan when Rob Vicious announces his solo tour, which Ojeezy told him to drop under the name Shoreline Mafia. And Ojeezy drops a solo single, Heavy. Things do indeed get heavy when somebody decides to test Ojeezy in traffic. What's the deal, man? Hey, hey what the fuck? Get that nigga Ojeezy. It's hard to tell who was in the wrong, but one thing is clear, if you come out of Jeezy, you will be met with a group of angry fists. So, I'd probably think twice. Shoreline will go absolutely insane the rest of the year. July 13, 2018, Rob Vicious drops solo project Trablanic with two-time platinum single Bands. July 17, 2018, Shoreline meets SOB RBE to shoot The Move. 
August 31st, 2018, Party Pack drops with certified gold record wings. And uh, more merch with Just So Jeezy's foot. November 30th, 2018, Shoreline announced Off The Extras Tour. And to wrap up the year, Shoreline drops OTX Christmas on December 6th, 2018 with absolute bangers. The album was so good that Ojeezy had the homies in prison getting it tatted on their head. I'm about to get the OTX tatted on my head, nigga. Big as fuck, nigga, right here, nigga. Yeah, yeah. say Off The Extras, nigga. Watch. In 2019, Shoreline had no problem packing out shows, selling out the shrine two nights in a row. Clearly, this crowd loves controversy because Ojeezy packing out the fans seems to become a trend now. After these back-to-back -back sold out shows, things really started to become a bit segregated. Ojeezy will go on to do solo shows in San Bernardino, Hollywood, downtown LA, all while also getting promoted on Double XL as a candidate for their 2019 freshman class. Mind you, again, alone, without the rest of the group, as a solo artist. I don't know, man. Ojeezy and Phoenix were doing some interviews like this one with radio station 92.3 and phoenix literally started doing his hair like ogz in order to get in the good graces of the label but for real why 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 would you do that if you didn't think phoenix was dedicating his life to his career he proves it in this interview when he says he's missing the birth of his child to be at the radio station so we got some great news today right hell yeah baby amari just he touching down yes sir ah. Is your girl in labor right now as we speak? Uh, water just broke. She's on the way to the hospital. I'm sliding after this. And in OGZ fashion, what would some promo be without some good old-fashioned conflict? Here, OGZ can be seen being kicked out of Disneyland because I guess somebody had reported to security that he had a weapon. After finding out it was a false alarm, the Disney staff didn't really like OGZ's attitude and decided to kick him and his group out. OGZ replies with a solid... Shut up. However, this was just an anomaly, right? <laughs> well, anyways, Phoenix and Ojeezy would continue their promo run doing interviews with DJ Vlad, Hip Hop DX, and the one where we can clearly tell that there is some sort of tension between the two is No Jumper, where Adam asked Phoenix why he decided to do the track Ho Shit solo and why we are seeing so much segregation in terms of marketing. So this new party pack shit is out. Yes, yeah, sir. All Heat platforms. Go going get up, that. Going up. What made you decide that you wanted to do the first single all by yourself? I think people were a little bit surprised. Uh, shit, none of, you know what I mean? It's just time to establish yourself, you know what I mean? Yourself individually as an artist at a mm -hmm. certain point. You know what I mean? I always go back to the group, but uh, you know what I mean, we all individuals at the end of the day, so we all got to individually do what we feel is right certain mm -hmm. times. You know what I mean? Especially with having new babies and shit. Mm. Like like when we wake up in the morning, we don't, we don't hit each other up to like, See what we doing, what we do is wake up and take care of our kids, you feel me? Mm. So it's like just growing up, you feel me, just doing different shit. That's definitely I'll true. Okay. Huh? I'll we, we, we be with the homies, I'll be with the homies all the time. Mm -hmm. We just like all our own men, you feel me? All speculation aside, the group would finish the paid and full tour and nobody saw what was to come next. R.I.P. Mac P. Dog. After the group's tragic loss, things just didn't seem right, and to confirm this, Phoenix would drop his tribute song to the late Mac P on his new solo YouTube channel. Soon after, the alleged killer of Mac P would go on IG Live, taunting Phoenix. Hey, yo, Phoenix! What's cracking, homie? Let me know if you want to knuckle up, fool. I mean, come on, what a clown. Once OGZ announced his solo collab with OVO, Phoenix finally realized that Shoreline was only created to benefit one person, OGZ. The very next day, Phoenix would take to IG Live to announce his departure from the group. Why'd I leave Shoreline? You know what I mean? Because I'm my own boss, you feel me? So at the end of the day, you're your own boss. You gotta go, you know what I mean? You gotta achieve them goals. And there's something holding you back from doing that or preventing you from getting where you need to go. And you know what I mean? As a man, you need to take it upon yourself to switch your situation. Am I cool with OGZ? Yeah, I don't got no animosity towards him, bro, or nothing like that. Why y'all not gonna follow each other? Shit, I don't know. Shit, I'm a petty nigga, I guess, bro, petty nigga too. I gotta get where I wanna be. I love, always will, have the group's best interest in my heart and what we did, you know what I mean? 
but sometimes it's like a relationship. You, you it just, you know what I mean. You can't force it. You know what I mean. You, you, you try to force something, it's just gonna, just gonna go down. You know what I mean. Ojeezy would not respond publicly, but then we'll be seen on GGN with Snoop Dogg. Uh -uh, I don't be smoking. I don't be smoking on sip. Oh, for real? Yeah. What you say? Uh, lean. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, this, that new shit. Hell, I'm gonna turn this shit down. That nigga said lean. <laughs> with all the tension between the members of Shoreline, there was no way they could get them in the same room to plan out the rollout for their next leading single, Gangsters and Sippers. Shout out to their marketing team and their ability to uh, improvise. From the lean house straight to the strip club. Strip club. Gotta get a pint, I'm trying to sip up. I can't be the only one who thought this animation was insanely cringe. Then they needed to postpone the video drop due to uh, not enough ass. Even the concept art for the mafia business was mid at best. But nonetheless, the streets needed this album. Vibes were all over the place. From Phoenix starting solo projects and in his own words, starting from the ground up. You're gonna be a nobody because you left shoreline. Ha! Man, come on, you need to... That nigga's uh, playing, man. I'm from a new project, from a new deal. New money. New money. New bitches, new everything. New everything. Uh -huh. Blowing up. Yeah. Finna rebuild, start from ground up, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Ain't nothing. In which Ojeezy would respond by flexing his new house he just bought. Mama, mama crack pipe, nigga, look at that shit. Stop playing with me. It's like a motherfucking, uh... Five niggas can walk up that staircase at the same time, bitch. That's like a movie theater staircase. Now I know what you're wondering. What about Rob Vicious? Everybody been wondering where I've been. Truth is, I'm trying to go to the league. Well, yeah. This dropped on the Shoreline Mafia YouTube page. I mean, clearly things were a mess at this point. Phoenix was the most vocal from the group when it came to talking about the breakup. He would go on IG Live and say things like, I'll never do another show on my Mafia song again. That's just done. So y'all I'm saying, y'all go enjoy them, uh, enjoy the album, man. Around this time, Phoenix would sign a publishing deal with Atlantic as an independent artist. And I got a little individual shit going with Atlantic. Just sign. I'm saying new deal, new bag, new me, new whip, new jury, all that coming. You know what I'm saying? So stay tuned, man. With Phoenix out here creating all this attention on the breakup, Ojeezy was forced to speak on it. Do you feel like you still like are carrying the fucking the banner of Shoreline Mafia, yeah, even though sure. you moved on? It's to my little uh, Instagram bio. Even though it's ceased to exist. No, that's that's my shit. I mean, I I came up with the name. Oh like, right. that, that's my baby. Uh -huh. It's forever gonna be my baby. That's right. like my whole vision and everything. Can you use it still? Like you still like sell merch for Shoreline sure, Mafia and stuff? Yeah, I, I own the trademark too. Oh. I bought it way before I became a rapper. Uh huh. You bought the Shoreline sure, Mafia trademark way before? Yeah. That's interesting. Cause I actually heard at one point that the trademark might have been part of what the dispute was between the members. That at a certain point, you owning the trademark became an issue. Uh, nah, that's not what it was, but I own the trademark since way before. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Damn. Sometimes, like, like... I didn't even know what it meant to own the trademark. Who told you? Somebody in your family, like, told, yeah, my, put you on to that? Uh, my son's grandfather. Really? My girl's dad. Now, this is all making sense. Remember James LaRice? Well... Clearly, Ojeezy had knocked up James LaRice's daughter. They end up getting married, and James LaRice finds out that uh, Ojeezy's sleeping on his couch, and he needs to get his stuff going and, and get something, get some momentum out here. Knows that he is actually from this poppin' rap group. Finds out that, okay, the rap group is poppin', you have some potential here, I can help you grow, and nobody owns your name. We're going to put this in your name, yada, yada. Let me show you the ins and outs of how to trademark. And we're going to help you push this shoreline shit. And you will benefit directly from it as an individual. Hey, I can't be mad at it. He was just looking out for his grandson at the end of the day and his daughter. So business is business. Now this is all making sense, though. Phoenix heard about the story that Ojeezy was telling and only had one thing to say. It's around this time the group lost another day one homie, Afo. R.I.P. Afo. At this point, it almost seemed like there was a gray cloud following Phoenix, and he really was feeling empty from the loss of his two friends and the loss of what he thought would be a lifelong bond between friends. Tensions were high across the board when Rob Vicious would go on IG Live and the chat would not stop bringing up OGZ. 
Then they said, why didn't you go with OGZ? What the fuck? I'm a grown ass man. Get off my shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, mean, bro, I'm my nigga, my block list, my block list is so long, it ain't even funny. I'm telling you, like, he don't give a fuck about y'all. So I don't know why you keep bringing him. He don't give a fuck about y'all. What up, gang? Look, nigga, like, wait, 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 ask me about that nigga. Leave me alone. I don't give a fuck about, bro. <laughs> I'll never give nobody a time of day to hop on a live and sit here and talk. Look, where's little Jeezy? Look, you know where he's not here. That's why your dumb ass ain't either. Get the fuck out my live, bitch. <laughs> He was losing it and saying Rob was making a mistake by leaving the group. The only person that was cool about the whole situation was Master Kato. Kato seemed to be the most level-headed and laid-back one out of the group. He would clear any sort of beef on his IG lives. So shout out bro, I ain't got no hate for him. He put me in position. What's on my forehead is OTX. R.I.P. the president. Mac P shit. Yeah. Alright, next question. What y'all want to know? Will you ever do one last show with Shoreline Mafia? Uh, yeah, I probably would. For sure, whenever niggas wanna, you know, all come together and shit. But right now, uh, niggas don't wanna come together and shit. I wanna, I mean, I'm with it, but it's up to everybody else. All the other guys, you gotta ask the guys. Rob Vicious was clearly dealing with the breakup the worst and would post things like, mad as hell I signed a deal. It changed my motherfucking life. And I hate waking up knowing somebody about to make me mad. And I don't wanna wake up. And yup, everybody getting cut off, fuck y'all. I want to take a moment to emphasize how important mental health is. If you have harmful thoughts, please seek help. To wrap up 2020, we would also get a lot of answers from Phoenix after doing an interview with the Innovators. As y'all know, you know what I'm saying, I was in the, the group Shoreline Mafia. You know what I'm yeah. saying, I started that shit. Me and bro started that shit some years back. You know what I'm saying, shout out, uh, you know what I'm saying, everything we did, you know what I mean? Can you talk about why the group specifically broke up? Uh, I say so sometimes like part of growing is growing apart. Obviously, money becomes a factor at a certain point. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's no room for two great whites or shit. There ain't yeah. no room for four great whites. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I would damn near say all of us was like our own man at the end of the day. And like, you know what I'm saying? We all was our own great whites. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you can't have four of them. And niggas going to be button heads. A lot of shit in my head was from the outside, like, other outside people's opinions kind of kind of coming into, coming group, into yeah. it and kind which, of which fucks up. up shit a lot of times yeah bro mamas because shit at, at there was a point in time where i thought the group would have never split you know what i'm saying yeah. shit, i ain't talked to nobody besides like rob aside from that like i mean like the outsiding part of the group like yeah. just the homies and everything shit since the split you know what i'm saying i ain't heard from nobody I, it's like some whole like different shit now you know what i'm That's saying crazy. now let's take a look at how ogz is doing at this time hey y'all got don julio on the plane uh, don julio i don't know i don't know yet y'all gotta get anything any hey, four loco y'all got four loco all right asking for a four loco on a plane is insane Oh yeah, and remember Ron Ron? Well, he had some words for OGZ saying, your favorite Mexican rapper is a bitch, and that OGZ world chain gonna be gone. In promotion of GZ world, OGZ would do an interview with Our Generation Music. First and foremost, you looking good. Come on, man, I look good, I feel good, I smell good. <laughs> man, you you been working out and everything? Yeah, or? I've been working out, I've been getting it in. You know, one thing I, I, I read the, like, okay, so like, Obviously, I think you know. I don't know if you know, but you are one of the most influential Mexican rappers. Yeah, for sure. Now, wrapping up 2021, Phoenix would end it kind of rough, getting his IG account suspended, which is the last thing he needed at this time. Phoenix, in fact, did end up losing his Instagram account for good. I just got word. Niggas banned permanently from Instagram. They got me shadow banned permanently, bro. Somebody hating on me, bro. Somebody like hella reporting my shit or something, bro. I don't know what's going on, but, uh, yeah, they said my, my, my Instagram shadow ban permanently. So yeah, you know what I mean? This was a moment that Phoenix felt a certain amount of defeat, posting, times have changed, weird ass world we're living in, ain't gonna lie. And who can blame him? Really, if anyone should get their account taken away, it should be Rob tweeting things like, I'm ready to crash out, fuck everything. I got fucked out of hella money. And anybody who wanna fight? Needless to say, OGZ had a lot of things to address because at this point, the fans are starting to catch wind as to why the group broke up in the first place. OGZ would go on No Jumper to clear the air. Do you talk to anybody uh, who who was in Shoreline still? You got a relationship with any of them or is it kinda just- Who was in Shoreline, what, what that mean? Uh, you know, you, Phoenix, Rob, and Kato. 
you talk, communicate with any of them at all at this point, uh, or is it just kind of over? So it was Shoreline. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I don't communicate with no one. Really? Uh-uh. It's been like that for a minute? Because I, I feel like... It's been like, like that since, since, since it happened. Since it happened. Even before. Like, that's why it happened. You feel me? There was, like, no communication. Like, right. That's why it happened, I feel like. You know, but it, it just seemed like it was impossible. It wasn't going to get saved at that point. Yeah, I feel like when it happened, it's already been like a year and two years into it. You feel me? Like it just wasn't cool no more. Right. So that's why it happened. Definitely. So once it happened, it was like it's already been over with. Like that's how we. It, it was nothing to us. Like the fans was like, "Oh my god, what happened?" Do you were you just being fake cool to get the check for a minute? Is nah, that how it felt? Hell, hell no. Nah. I was just. um I just doing me. Like me, I just be focused on, on, on me. You feel mm-hmm. me? I just be focused on what I do. How'd you feel when uh Ron Ron was talking shit about you on Twitter? Uh we talked about it later. Oh, we really? ran into each other, we talked about it. What was the tone of the conversation like? Um, it was cool. Yeah, it was different it was different <laughs> from Twitter. <laughs> For sure. But you patched it up, sorted it out? It's cool. Well, he said he would make that chain disappear. Yes. It's here, though, right? <laughs> it's here. I was laughing when I read that one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> While this drama would continue, Phoenix would continue to knock down goals by announcing the release of Phoenix Flex in Volume 2 and celebrate one year straight of being a fully independent artist, starting a solo tour, and drops a Baby Mama diss song. I mean, hey, it's, uh, it's actually not bad. Kicking off 2023, Phoenix does another interview with the Innovators podcast to address a few things about how OGZ ended up owning the name Shoreline Mafia. They had came out and how basically OGZ was saying how he 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 ended up owning the name of the yeah. Whole, how does that happen? Because you feel me like y'all a group like how would it be that like Man, one person uh, end up owning the name? So I don't even know. You know what I mean? That's a question. Uh, shit, you have to ask him. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. You know. I got you. I got you. Ojeezy would also go on the Bootleg Kev podcast to continue to say, when I started Shoreline Mafia. When I first started the, uh, coming up with Shoreline and yeah. everything, so we were dropping hella, all the Detroit producers, like, Change Your Life, one of, one of my big uh, Shoreline songs, I flew Hawaii, uh, hell of a out to Hawaii, and mm-hmm. we did that shit in Hawaii. And then would also say that it was a 50-50 split between him and Phoenix. What, what, what kind of bag would it take to get you guys to come back together to do like a, a one-off? Bag. A super bag? <laughs> yeah, it's got to... Because I already make a bag every, every, well, yeah, but every say, other day. You're really day, rich. Look at your jewelry. <laughs> would your bag have to be bigger than everybody else's? Uh, it, it, it would make <laughs> sense. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> was that kind of like a big reason? Like, why, why, what was the... Nah, because... Um, me and Phoenix was uh was everything was split fifty fifty. So okay. and then the 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 other homies was only on like two, three songs. So Right. Oh yeah, I forgot. He flexes his massive new tattoo of his baby mama. Uh, what's your latest tattoo you got, man? Uh, I got this joint. That's my baby mama. Oh wow. Yeah. I got her lips right here too. So let me ask you something. <laughs> With the lips thing, was that her idea or your idea? No, that was my idea. You were like, hey, babe, right here. <laughs> She's got to feel great. She's like, I got my lips, and now my face is on his fucking arm. He ain't doing nothing crazy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Phoenix is out here living the life he raps about after his house is seemingly raided by Hollywood Police Department for unknown reasons. Feds came and kicked the door in, nigga, like it was motherfucking 4.30 a.m. Who niggas think that is? Hollywood Police Department, man. Get off the motherfucking meat litter, nigga. You know, I, I got court on the 10th, you know what I'm saying? So, shit, I'm going to put some videos out and hopefully the project out before the 10th, nigga, because nigga, nigga get locked up. I'm going to make sure y'all got that music. I'll probably tell y'all, it's rap, it's it's rappers, and then it's niggas who rap. I'm a nigga who rap, bro. Niggas really got real life shit going on out here, bro. Damn, even if he has to go to court for his case, he says he would still pull up to a show in Utah. What's slow in the program, shit, nigga. I got a show. If I got court and I got a show, nigga, I'm pulling up to the show, nigga. Fuck court, nigga. It's dead. He really loves his fans, and Phoenix has always had love for the rap game in general. Now, Phoenix has really been fighting relentlessly to make it as an independent artist without the backing of the label. Dropping hit after hit, he has showed the fans, no matter what, he would do what he loved for the people who supported him. However, things just weren't the same since the breakup. But these circumstances would soon change on October 6, 2023, when Ojeezy and Phoenix Flexen reunite on stage at the Hollywood Palladium.
This was such a surreal moment for Los Angeles and fans all over the internet. So many people were happy to see this legendary duo blessing the stage again after the breakup over three years prior. This was a major W for LA at this time and everyone was riding the wave of excitement. Now, I've made an effort to not make this a video bash, you know, Jeezy, but the more research I do, the more I find people speaking out on their interactions with him. Take this San Diego artist Tutu G Fay, for example. He claims to have met with OGZ to be the first artist signed to OGZ's new label. Uh, I know you worked with OGZ, man. What was that experience like? <laughs> uh, bro, cool. I don't really fuck with bro like that, though. Tutu G Fay claims that when it was time to sign, he met up with some people that he'd never met before, trying to get him to sign a 360 deal. When Tutu G Fay turned down their offer, I guess the vibe was a little off, and more issues followed involving the song they had recorded together already prior. Yeah, part of it was like some other dude there I'd never seen, like just going over everything. And it was like, damn, they wasn't even talking. I'm just like looking at them. I'm just sitting there, I'm like, hell no, nah, like this shit, it don't feel right. Like, I don't know, this shit just felt weird as hell. Like, now, okay, I know what you're thinking. This is hearsay, and that contract could have said anything. Who knows if we can even take this guy's word? Okay, fair. However, in the same month, something a bit more sinister will rise to the surface. Ojeezy's baby mama would soon take to Instagram to speak out on some alleged domestic violence involving Ojeezy on his birthday. Now, I know these are allegations and we should take this lightly without any evidence and all things considered, this was a post and delete. We haven't heard anything about this since and I really hope they iron things out because they still have a young child together. As for the group reuniting, Phoenix has come out to say that him and Ojeezy have already recorded a ton of music together and it looks like we could expect to see them working together again moving forward. And I know we all hope to see Rob and Kato up on stage with them also. For now, the story of Shoreline Mafia continues and I know the music scene couldn't be more excited to see what these guys do next.